USA Today called this one of the top 10 antique towns in the United States, and boy, are they right. Tower Avenue Antiques is right at the center of it, and my great personal friend has taken this place and turned it into a vintage showcase worth coming from the big cities to see. So let's go take a look. This is Centralia, Washington, and this is the downtown vintage shopping district, and there is a lot of antique and vintage shopping here. My friend Becky Gray is the owner of this mall, and it's a really great mall. Right now, I would say it is the center of the antique industry in Centralia. Centralia is the center of the Northwest, being halfway between Seattle and Portland, and so a lot of people driving through shop in this place. This used to be the J.C. Penney's building. It was built in 1915, and I'll bet some of this stuff was sold in J.C. Penney's in this building way back when. The Pretty Polly 14-piece uh, set is very sweet in the Doric and Pansy pattern. That's the teal there. And then this Frenchy condiment set is really fun, $65 right out of the 50s. Fiesta wear jadeite, you know a lot of this stuff had to be carried in this building when it was new. A couple from out of town are buying a whole bunch of furniture and small decorative items, so they are busy. And so while they're busy, I'm going to take you around the mall and show you some of the things they have. I guess it's pretty obvious to head straight for the green glass, the Vaseline Green. Central Glass Company made these. They were an outfit in West Virginia that is less known than some of the others, but they actually made quite a bit of stuff in the 1920s. Tiffin made the piece in the back of the basket. $37.50 seems like a pretty good price on that. They also made these etched candlesticks in the front here. This is Sabino glass. I really like the way this glows. This is really pretty stuff. It was made in France. They used a certain sort of arsenic to get that color initially, and so earlier pieces look a little different from later pieces. The stronger the glow, the older the piece but they all have that very nice pearlescent. And you see prices in the $75 range for the larger pieces there. The Lilique Sparrow, $57.50, that's a good price. That's less than I have on mine, haha. -ha. Gonna have to think about my price. They also have a whole bunch of Goebel Fryer tuck in here, and it's really fun to see a whole set of this. They've got the decanter, which is a hard piece to find. They have a bunch of the red, which you don't see, the cardinal. The Cardinal is less seen than the Friar, but they made all sorts of cute little pieces. And a dealer sign. The dealer sign is $67.50. That would be a scarcer piece. A bunch of really nice English chintz. This Royal Winton breakfast set in the black and pink colors is a harder pattern to find than the small flowers. More Vaseline glass. Look at these twist candlesticks. The satin glass by Tiffin. Tiffin had been the U.S. glass company prior to the Depression and they reformulated the company in the 1930s and they did a lot of really great modern glass. They did Alexandrite glass, so they did a lot of things that were pretty progressive. They did some really wonderful painted pieces in the 30s and figural items, lamps like parrots and wonderful, wonderful stuff. Northwood is an older company. The piece in front here with the more traditional design. There's nice costume jewelry in this mall as well. Look at these really pretty Matisse and Renoir pieces. The copper jewelry with the nice toning, and these prices are good, only $40 on the pink encrusted necklace, $60 on this set with the boomerang shapes. These were the people who took the knowledge that they learned of metal crafting from making these pieces and started enameling and making wall pieces, and that is the Curtis Jure Company that people also collect. And there is a lot of pretty Juliana jewelry in here. There's one dealer in particular who gets a lot of Deliza and Elster jewelry. That dress clip is quite fantastic. The fur clip in the middle, that is 1940s. I believe that that is Eisenberg, yes it is, and I'm sure that is set in sterling. This is a really neat corner here. I just love it. It's called Coffee and Snacks, and it looks like you could just sort of sit down and relax, but look at the stuff that they are making out of vintage. I think it's great that it's lighting because lighting is something that 
vintage pieces work really well for and they're just having so much fun with it. I especially like this chrome sphere swag lamp. If I had a place to put this, it would go with me. I think the colors are really great, but they're making them out of torches and trumpets and coffee pots. This is really, really a lot of fun. And they are doing it in a way that is inventive and yet is a consistent product. So it all makes sense together. This is the kind of repurposing I like to see. These are all pretty common things. They're not taking anything that is so rare and they are leaving things alone like the vintage green swag lamp and this pendant lamp if they're already correct for what they are. The Shelley China here, this was made in England until 1966 and this dealer has really, really high powered stuff. The things that people who collect this understand are rare and scarce and that's why they're able to sell cups and saucers in the 50 and $100 range. And he wrote the book on Shelley? Yeah. Ah, there we go. Russ and Lee, yes, that's right. I wrote for Schiffer as well, and Schiffer does a very good price guide. Yeah, it's a compendium that will tell you everything that you would want to know about Shelley China. The English tradition is pretty strong here in the Northwest. We're very close to Canada. There's a lot of little tea rooms in some of the towns and little restaurants that like to furnish themselves with finer China, as well as people who collect at home. Now this is a different space and this is what's neat about this mall. They have a really good variety of stuff. This is a Hillsboro, Oregon rural fire protection okay. captain's hat. This is World War II and this is Australian military forces. That's interesting with the brim, a little different than we would expect to wear here. This is a genuine World War II German police helmet like Sergeant Schultz on Hogan's Heroes. This is a U.S. Navy helmet, late in World War II. There is a lot of interest in military collectibles, and there are not a lot of sources for this in this part of the United States. We see more of this in the parts of the United States that were subject to war themselves, particularly places that were involved with the Civil War. On a happier note, we have a very cute case full of little paper mache eggs from post-war Germany and little stife mohair pieces made in post-war Germany as well. This cute little Dutch girl cookie jar is by Red Wing. We are starting to see 1990s Mission Revival furniture come into the marketplace because that's 30 years past and it was really well made because they were trying to at least approximate the quality of the original which was made in the 1890 to 1920 vintage. Look how cute some of these are. This guy in the middle here has just got the dopiest expression with one fang. It's a bank. This guy wants to be friends. You know, he's 50 years old. He still has his hair. A very 80s piece of furniture. This is the table here. $125. This would have fit with Santa Fe style of that era as well as brutalistic modernism. I actually like it, I have to admit. I didn't think it was bad at the time. I think it has potential for modern design as modernism moves forward in generations. And there's the Dutch girl cookie jar in yellow. Fostoria coin is a pattern we see in the wild because it was very popular well into the 1970s. I like the azure blue. You see prices between around $20 and $45 on these items. The lamps sell for more, even in the amber. It's appropriate this time of year, and we are seeing sales of amber increase. I really like this old trunk here. Christian Sand to New York. Scandinavian American lines. A lot of Scandinavians emigrated to Washington State in the 1890s to about 1910. I grew up on Paulson Road in an area that was largely settled by people from that part of the world at that time. Another neat Fairbank scale. I have to admit I don't tire of these because they did a lot of different designs. They like to put their name on things in bold and interesting ways. This would be about 1885 I would suspect because of the use of brass. They're trying to make this one pretty fancy. It's priced at $289 and I have to say that 
For a scale collector, that is not a bad price for what it is. Morgantown, West Virginia. Golf ball was one of the patterns that the modernists caught onto early. The ruby was more expensive at the time, more expensive now. I think they're really beautiful and good for the holidays. They also did a nice steagal green. It is Halloween. I promise they don't always dress like this, but that's pretty great. A very pretty purse there. I really like that one with the beading. It's only $59.75. It looks like something out of the 1920s, and I have to say that seems like a very good price, and if they give a dealer discount, I might be tempted to buy it. That's one of the great things, is that you can find things as a reseller in these antique malls as well. Centralia is halfway between two major cities, and the markets are different. The things that sell in the general local area or the regional area here are different than sell in Seattle and Portland. Dealers from Seattle and Portland bring interesting things out here. It all moves around, and it's an opportunity for people from the entire area to see a pretty wide variety of stuff. This dealer has some neat stuff. I like the farm product sign, 225 because it's a big size and a bright color is about the right price. The U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Magnolia, that is pretty neat. That is priced at $80. I like that. That would be a good wall decoration if you lived on a lake or something. Antique cash register, I love that. Even a box of glass insulators. It's nice in this store. This store has always had some things that are of appeal to people who don't necessarily collect fine housewares or jewelry or those sorts of tchotchkes. It also has true antiques. We'll see some of that as we go along the way too. The Speedway Food Freezer in a class by itself. Set of three posters, $56. Cardboard is starting to be more collectible in advertising and while the condition of these is not great, if you were going to use them say in a display in a themed restaurant or a meat market or something like that, you might actually find a good use for these and that's a good price. A lot of different dealers in the mall here. There's lots of fun things to comb through. There are some things to look at too to learn and this is a good example here. It's $65. It's a great price. The weight is pretty good but it is missing its trap on the bottom. It does seem that this is an original marine lamp, though. Look at the size and thickness of the glass. There's chips in the glass from having been used. Even without its trap, that's actually a pretty good price because nautical collectors are buying mainly for the look with this sort of thing. And even a little bit beaten, this could easily sell for a hundred, a hundred and a quarter. I, if I have room, I may buy this and take it to Florida. I think it would sell there pretty easily. $35 on the Fenton rose colored vase there. I think that's a nice price. And I like the little Winfield salt and pepper shakers. Only $5 from the 50s. This is my friend Andrea. Andrea has been a Bakelite dealer and a jewelry dealer for years and she has a very nice display here and she does well here. She used to sell alongside me in Pioneer Square Antique Mall in Seattle. I've known her for a long time because of that. And she does the Rose City Vintage Market. She had a good show. So did I. The Root Beer Bakelite Horse hanging. That pin is $145. $95 for the flower. Carb Bakelite. Well, Bakelite was a good thing to carb because it did not crack or break easily, but it was a difficult thing to carb because it's very thick and heavy. I see a whole bunch of interesting little pins and dress clips. I like the wood with the bells in Bakelite. That's interesting. 145 on that as well. But she has a lot of other kinds of jewelry too. Very nice scarab jewelry. Listener, this signed Azure Blue set. I'm really noticing that color. I think because it's gotten very grainy and dark here. And so bright, happy colors are attractive to me. Although we are in the holiday season, so the Cobalt Juliana bracelet might be an easier sell. Renoir and this Heath jewelry here. A very neat Art Deco bracelet in the squares there. This is pretty in the blue. This is Mexican sterling, 125 on that, and Siamese sterling. So some very pretty pieces. She has very nice things. It's all costume, but it is 
good quality and it is the sort of thing people are looking for. I like the wood and the lucite here, $65 on the Bathing Beauty, that is pretty neat. Some very cute kitchenware in here. I like the green stool. We see a lot of the red and the yellow, but the green is a little bit later in time, mid-60s in that avocado color. Heisey nut dishes, these little tiny dishes with handles. Yes, they were to hold your nuts. Interesting to me to see the Edna Heibel plate because I associate her with Florida and New York. I've done appraisals of her original art in Florida. This is the collector plate, but it was done by Royal Dalton, so it was considered a little better at the time, and it's $12 now. Pretty silk kimono, and a very cute lacquer dresser box. This little jewelry box is likely to be 1930s or 1950s. The styles didn't change much, and in the early post-war, we got a lot of this sent over because Japan was recovering, and they were trying to find things that they could sell to us. And so these little boxes, I think they're very sweet. I buy them whenever I see them in good condition. They're often not. It's only $24. I think that's a very good price for this piece. Now this is Chinese paper mache and this is antique. This is probably right around the end of the dynastic era or early, early nationalists around 1920. Paper mache fortune sticks. That looks like it'd be a fun thing to play. $42. Being in the Northwest, we are likely to see Asian art and artifacts, sometimes some very valuable and old things. These are utilitarian, but these were imported right about the time of the repeal of Prohibition. Wing Li Wai bottle. Look at this old Royal Dalton. It may be old enough to only have the Dalton mark because they didn't get the Royal Warrant until I think the 1890s. But look at the staple repair in it. You can see the crack near the top, right in the dead center between the strands of pearls, and you see that lateral staple. That is how repairs were done in the early era. That was the only way they had, because they didn't have the kind of adhesives we have now. Glue had to be boiled, it had to be rendered. I, I suppose it still does, but it was a much more complicated process then. In fact, a glue fire is what led to all of downtown Seattle burning down in 1889. It's a really neat picture because of the damage and some people really like to collect staple repaired items specifically and that's why it's still $79. Now if it was perfect it'd be $100 more. The Skookum dolls are really neat too. Look at the countenance. I really like this. Do not sit. African chair. This is really fun. $329. That is just really neat. You could put Santa Claus in that. They have a whole row of different furniture. I like this, it's on wheels. This might have actually been for an institution because it was a double chambered ice box. It's only priced at 220 and you could certainly use this as storage and extra room in the kitchen or for a wine cellar. That was a nice way to start the day. Boy, they have a lot of neat stuff in here. This is the first chance I've had to really look around because I've been really busy working on my space, which I still have more to do today, but I'm getting there. A trench art lighter made out of some sort of a flying projectile, a practice grenade, scare your friends. A big bang cannon. I like these, these watch fobs I always look for, and $20 is a pretty fair value. I like the one with the movie projector. I have a friend who might like that. That could be a Christmas gift. He was a projectionist for a while. Cast Iron Buffalo Bank, that's neat, $55. I really don't run into that one as often. It has a rather wide seam, and I would be suspicious of its origins because of that, but I think that it may just be a poor casting. BN, that's Burlington Northern. The ruby is going to be more valuable than the clear on a railroad lantern. A clinometer. You know, there are people who just like collecting these old nautical gadgets, Navy items, military items, just to lay around as curiosities. It's conversation that also will project you to a time that we certainly have read about that's quite storied. This is a 1920s era bicycle bell. $45. These brass candlestick holders are true antique. They said one is inscribed 1834. I don't know if that would be a date or just some sort of a stock number. They look like the push-up candles. You see the levers there to push the candle up so it doesn't turn into a ball of wax at the bottom. These 
were English. They were made in the early to mid-Victorian era primarily. Deputy Sheriff's badge, that's something you have to go to an antique store for. You can't get those on eBay. Bicycle license is neat. Fort Lewis, Washington is a big installation near here and there's a 50s era cigarette lighter. Trench art knife, in other words, made of whatever pieces they could get. These are so cool. These are figural, they're Japanese. They are from about 1910, typically. They are bisque porcelain. They often don't have any country of origin mark. The prices on these are between 125 and 225. You just don't see them in good condition. When you find these, they oftentimes have cracks, so look carefully. Now here's an example of an old string on the center one used to hold the teapot lid to the rest of the piece so that it doesn't fall when you're pouring. That's probably why it's still all here. This is a neat Victorian piece. This is a beaded wall holder for magazines or a set of bellows for the fireplace, potentially mail, that sort of thing. This is from the Lewis and Clark Expo, which was in Portland in 1905. There's only one building left, but they're starting to renovate around where that area was. And this is priced at $45. The same company made the Salem, Massachusetts plate. These were done in Staffordshire by Roland and Marcellus. Burlington Northern is this railroad switch lantern. 235 is a pretty fair price for these. I sold mine right here for the same price. This is called the Cowboy Room. And it's a pretty cool place because I don't know if it's specifically cowboy, but it definitely has a Western feel. We are in rural Washington here. There's a lot of horse farms around here. There are organic farms around here. There is definitely a country culture here. And so you see a lot of that. This is a really neat piece here, this smoking stand from the 1930s. I love the case, but the case is not for sale. I understand that. It is just a display because they have some very nice turquoise and sterling jewelry in here as well. The old pack saddle is really neat. These wooden saddles with not much to them were just a strap to the animal and then you strap things to that pack and you went on your merry way. Beaded moccasins, these are handmade. They look 20th century, but they were made by somebody not as part of a commercial production. They're only $64. I like the spurs. This just has a look and it does well. This is a dealer who's been here for many years through a few different owners. This actually has, was two other antique malls before this. I really like this folk art with the basket weave, this painted piece, which looks like it's from about the 19 teens, maybe a little bit of pen or pyrography in that. This very handsome $425 American dresser from about 1870. But I see a big pink glass vase up here, and this is what I want to see up close because it's $28. Let's see if it has any age. Okay, well, my opinion is probably not much because there's a scooped hollowed out palatal. There's not a lot of evidence of wear. So I'm going to figure that that's a decorative item and that $28 is fine. But it always pays to look at the thing that sticks out because you know, dealers get things in lots. If you're doing a specific look like this and then all of a sudden you're stuck with three pieces of glass, what are you going to do with them? Santa Claus is coming to town. At least he's bobbing his head around. It's from about 1970. He is standing in the middle of a pretty good jewelry display. There is a lot more Juliana here. Deliza and Elster. A nice 1940s sterling pin. The sterling is not worth a ton in those. It's not a lot of sterling by weight. It's more about the fact that they used a high quality material for what was considered costume jewelry at the time. Venetian wedding cake beads. Wedding cake because it has that gold enameling and the pink that looks like frosting on a wedding cake. Juliana Clamp. This is Stanley Hagler, another good name to know in jewelry. This is a cute pressed coral piece from the 1940s. At $24, that might have to go to Florida with me. Smiley Face Bank, $8.95. Am I reading that right? Oh, that is definitely going with me. I am having fun looking through this place. I am finding things to buy, I'll tell you. This lamp sure looks like Hager to me. Look at the texture on there. It looks a lot like Earthwrap, especially that avocado. 
I can't prove it for certain, but it sure has the right look. It's priced at $149. This is a neat little chair. Now it's about a child size for our culture, but this is from Ghana, from the Ashanti people. And let's see what they say about it because I don't really know about these. An Asipim chair, $750. It's very interesting with all the hand tacking and you can tell this is old and has been used quite a bit because of the wear along the top. The wear to the leather, but yet it's still pretty intact. That's a pretty neat piece. This dealer actually gets really fun stuff. I like the pickled bamboo shelf from about 1900. I've always been a fan of these, 265 on that. I've got a couple upstairs that are actually priced pretty well, but they're so covered with stuff no one can see them. Plaster casting of a Harlequin. I mean, there's just some neat decorative things in here. Old bathroom fixtures are definitely something that people will buy if you can find new old stock because people are restoring these old homes. The chartreuse look like they were done in the 1930s and gray probably around 1940. I always like this design. This is Alamo pottery out of Texas. Their stuff was pretty heavy. I mean this is really weighty. It might weigh five pounds. You will notice if you pick it up it's quite stout. This one has a weak stamp but it did say Alamo art pottery. It was a little too heavy I think to compete in terms of shipping even though Texas was in the middle of everything so they didn't last a really long time. There's the same version in brown. $139. The Don Cesar Hotel in St. Petersburg, Florida might love to have him. Fortunately, he's missing his scabbard, but boy, that's tempting. These are money. These are African cast bronze bangles, and these represented wealth in the culture from which they came. They're priced at $60 each. I am always partial to Art Deco benches. I even like the upholstery on this. The floral design is fun. $169 on that. This blue painted primitive twine holder is likely to be from Eastern Europe. A lot of this sort of thing came out of there when the Berlin Wall fell and there was reunification of Europe about 30 years ago. And these pieces were from probably the early 1900s at that point, sometimes even earlier. This is a nice Peters and Reed pot here. You can see the green. That is deliberate to give it a look of age like bronze that has greening rather than the ceramic it really is. They're a little bit underrated in the market I think. Only $90 on that piece. Whereas the Roseville Mastique, also a nice pattern, is $125. There are only days until Christmas. These were done in the 1930s by Lloyd Manufacturing and the design was by Kem Weber. The Brooklyn Museum has had an exhibit on Weber and so it is definitely something known with amongst modernists and that's the reason that this is priced at $22.50. When you get into serious art deco modernist furniture it's hard to find now. A lot of it's been in collections for years so it is pricey but it does sell. And these are maybe the piece de resistance. These are $120 each. These big brass floor lamps. Pretty amazing that they took these huge candles and it seems like the candles would have sold for that price. So they did a lot of extra work and you get to be the beneficiary. And besides, it's pretty gray here in the winter. They need the light. All right, well, we are going upstairs. Those lights that you saw hanging from the ceiling actually came from an old Portland, Oregon hotel when this place was first renovated when it was the pharmacy. Here's a neat Doughboy picture. It's the convex frame. It's ornate. It doesn't have any damage and the Doughboys sell for more. So $79.95 is a pretty good price on that. These are fun. There are some things in the mall that are new but not a whole lot and it's mainly stuff that's fun and interesting and inventive like this art. I think these are really fun. These are all by Murray. I, I like vintage collage art so that one really grabs me as does that. Also I've seen these in Nashville where people are starting to do shadow boxes again. Just like I said that piece I had in my space with the Native American was done in the 1970s or in the 80s. Well now people are doing this again in an interesting way. The pebble art is mid-century though. That is 1995. You never say anything about my face. All right well up we go. This space I watched a young lady of about eight or ten years old who's learning to play the piano 
pick out a whole bunch of sheet music and I was so happy to see that because sheet music is a lot of fun but it hasn't really been popular for a long time because people were getting rid of pianos in favor of keyboards and then not really being serious about it. So it was nice to see somebody picking up some older stuff that she thought would be interesting to learn and it made me feel like the sheet music I have might be worth getting out again. This is my friend Tom's space. A whole bunch of Department 56 Christmas houses just came in yesterday along with a bunch of mohair bears. But he's got a lot of old stuff that's really cool too. I like the saw shop sign, but I especially like this by Kirkendall Shoes. This is a shoe store bench advertising that would have sat out in front or maybe inside the lobby of the store. I sold one of these a few years ago for about $650. I think he has a similar price on this one. It's just neat from about 1920. I like how it's up against the window where you can see the light through it. He's doing very well in this store and he's honestly a little understocked right now, but I like the barber pole lights. I always thought these were neat from the early 1970s. 125 for the pair on those. Ah yes, time marches on. I remember paying more than $49 to buy these and take them home and assemble them when they were brand new in 1983. So, hmm, do the math or preferably don't. Here's my upstairs space. I still have work to do, so you're gonna see some gaps like this empty case. I am so pleased because a friend of mine, an early viewer of mine has become friends with an old friend of mine named Bob and he is a longtime antique dealer from Seattle and they are sharing this space and they're already off to a great start. They had a very pretty piece of furniture here that sold right away. Bob is an extremely knowledgeable antique dealer. I learned a lot from him when I was first in the business so she has certainly gotten herself a very fine mentor in my opinion. I like the bride's baskets here. This is Victorian opalescent glass and look how pretty it is and $45. I mean, the prices are incredibly low on bride's baskets right now because they don't attribute to a particular company. These prices are pretty high relatively though because this is attributable to a particular company. These are fry glass out of Syracuse, New York, and the candlestick holders are especially beautiful. They did this faux vol, which is the name of their opaline glass. It's a lot like the Sabino we saw downstairs. It has that glow to it and it's just really pretty. They did a lot of kitchenware. $40 for the casserole dish is actually a pretty good price. But they did tableware and then the artware. And the artware candlesticks are priced at $275. I think they're just great. Very nice Victorian music cabinet. I love this 1930s lobsterware. This is Japanese. I think it's just really fun and bright. And $18 on the divided dish. I mean, those are good prices. That will definitely go at some point to somebody who collects such. Now, Bob's previous partner was a fellow named Wally, and they had an antique store in Seattle for many, many years on Capitol Hill. And Wally was really into the Coronation collectibles. Wally has not been with us for a while now. He was a great guy. I learned a ton from him as well, especially about Coronation collectibles. Portraits of George V and Queen Mary here. They ascended to the throne in 1910. It was a lot like what will likely happen where Prince William will come to the throne sooner than his father did. This is King Edward the Seventh and Queen Alexandria. More interest in this now because of the change in the royal family because of this guy. This was one of the first royal visits to Canada when George V came in 1901. At that point, they were the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and York. That was when Queen Victoria was the regent, and that was her final year, because in 1902, after she passed, Edward VII came to power. This is a fun grouping of items here. I like the Kurok trays, and I like the African baskets and figures. It's something different. I think it displays really well. And, you know, a lot of these items are in the maybe 30 to 40 year old range. But as time goes on, I think that the color and designs are going to be respected more and more. And, you know, Africa is also industrializing. They're not going to make things there like they did traditionally forever. 
Blue Mountain Pottery Walking Bear is 45. I really like this with the Warriors on the teak for $24. The Kurok trays with the musical instruments are really fun. And I like this. This is Orcas Island Pottery, or else it's Japanese, to look like Orcas Island Pottery, which was a company here in Washington in the 1950s that did this totem ware in the 50s and 60s. I think this might be Orcas Island because it doesn't have a Japanese label. And the Hager pumpkin, which was a very popular piece in the 70s, is $25, which I think is a pretty good price. So we're looking down from the mezzanine onto the main floor, but wait, there's more. We have three floors. Yes, this place is big. Now this area was not really developed in any way that I know of. I don't even know that J.C. Penney's used this floor, but then when it built out as an antique mall, well, what a perfect place for a whole lot more spaces. So this is going to be more of an overflow area. And the great thing is that this is where you're going to find deals as a reseller. So truthfully, we've done pretty well so far already. I like this house art tray from about 1970. After 25 years and 400 payments, you can burn the mortgage in it. Good luck in your new home that you don't own. $4 for that friendly reminder. I like that. Now this dealer is 20% off and I see some cool stuff in there. I like the Lucite Flower Power Napkin Holder for $18 and with the discount that'd be $14 something. And the Pyrography piece is neat. Ten Commandments, that's very vivid. And we've got some banks here including the old Sea First, which is local interest. They were the National Bank from 1870 until 1981 when they literally poured their fortunes into an Oklahoma con man's boot. This is a fun and interesting group of various studio pottery pieces and European pottery pieces and things that if you could identify you might be able to score reseller gold. This one says that it is Joshua Tree and it's a nice little weed pot. This is an Orca. This would be a Northwest made Raku piece. Raku is starting to be more collected and more priced at $16. That might be worth buying. This piece here is likely to be Belgian from the 1930s. They're being cute and calling it Alienware. This piece almost reminds me of Sasha Brastoff, but it has a mark on it that says that it is this Scottish pottery that I've had before recently. So interesting pieces that we don't see all the time, and because they are sold here mainly as decorative items and not collected as much for their names, even this Westwood Ware from California, which is a neat looking piece from the early 1960s, well the prices are modest, $18 on that very large accent piece. So you could do a really neat display as they've done here for maybe $100 and cover a shelf. I just got one of these little Rockingham pig banks too. Rockingham is this spatter pottery glaze over brown. One of the earliest glazes invented in the United States. And also done in England. Ellsworth Rand fish. That's something cute from the 90s that'll be collectible someday. Wow, a lot of ceramics here. This wall pocket is pretty. I like the chinaware with the iris for 18. I'm a big fan of this Shawnee Kenwood. Goldwater 64 for $5 is a good price. The Sundial Casserole here. There is the Kenwood mark. And if I manage not to break it, we will find the price. A little bit hard to do that with one hand. I should have taken the lid off. $25. That is a very neat piece, and that is a certainly fine price for it. These are Bauer's Bruchet line, which was a very simple modernist line. I love the colors. 1950s, you see prices from as little as $3 per piece. Another interesting diorama, this one of ropes. This was also popular in the 1970s. This knot board is priced at $2.45. We're out west, so here are saddles. I like the hand tooling on the first one. That looks like what I associate with Mexican design. The second one is more ornate. And the third one is rather plain and looks older. So let's see what they say about them because 
I know a little about saddles, but I'll bet they have some expertise if we can find it. Unmarked high back saddle, and the high back, of course, will seat you for longer rides and more comfort. $230 on that one. The trail saddle is priced at $255. But this old saddle, which says it's Gallup Saddlery, so out of New Mexico, needs some restoration, but it's priced at $110. It would have a good look just for decorative purposes, which is what a lot of people are doing with these now. Gee, I wonder how they came up with the idea for this table. They were wheeling a piece of glass and they set it down and they said, you know what, let's just call it good. In the spirit of having the best one, the cheapest one, or the only one, I actually took out my Tiffin thumbprint and Indiana thumbprint because they have very nice examples here for the same price I had on mine and I took mine to a mall where they didn't have any. It is really good to change things around between your real world locations, your show boxes, and your eBay stock. It just keeps everything fresh. And then you don't get sick of stuff because you sell it. This is a different Vernon Kilns plate. This is the Sugar House Centennial in Utah. I have not seen this piece before. I see a lot of Vernon Kilns plates. They really took over that market and during and after the Second World War when the English souvenir plates could not be imported. I was introduced to these because a woman who lived in the area by the name of Orpha Klinker had been a designer of these and her signature was on some of them. So we had people in the area who were collecting only the ones signed by her. I've always loved the idea of a T for two set. You put a different bag in each one and you can serve yourself or you and a guest a couple of little servings of different kinds of tea. These are Japanese lusterware from the mid-30s, and 1750 just seems like such a cheap price. As does the Heirloom Fostoria candle holder in the opal white, 2250. If you have turkey platters, well, they may be big and awkward to ship, but now is your moment to sell them. I'm surprised these are here, but this is when Olympia Beer tried to be rolled out as a national brand. That was their big hope. It didn't work and because of that we lost the brewery which is in Olympia about 20 miles north of here and there's a lot of collectors of Breweriana. But maybe seeing the butts of people with beer in their pocket in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa is not in tune with the local collector market because at $25 each I would have expected these to be gone already. This is a neat way to preserve this. They take an old piece of Halloween crepe paper from the 1930s and framed it. What a cool look. This guy was made in Mexico in the 70s, but yes, he's collectible too. He's Santa after all. Let's see how much this chalk Santa is. $25. Notice the hole in it. They're not well made. A lot of times they have damage to them before you even get them. So you have to look them over carefully. Groovy orange lamp. Xenomorph would like this. I like the shape. It's very 60s with the genie bottle, but 125, well, he'll have to come get it himself. Love the Union Pacific Railroad wall map. It has a stain, but it's so neat just to see where everything went. It's, it's pretty sun faded too. This would have been a lot of red in here. This is the old logo from before 1950. I would say this looks like probably a late 1940s version. I have a collector viewer who is looking for photos, old ones of women who look like they are strong and independent. And I think this might fit the bill. I like that hat that she's wearing and just the look on her face. She seems like she's all no nonsense. This is called The Card Reader by Jean Gale and it's priced at 175. I think that's a very interesting piece of art and I like the bold colors very much in keeping with modernist design right now. Here's another 1980s alert. This is Harry Wysocki. This is a textured print. You can see the texturing in the piece. That was that embossing on paper was a very novel idea in the 1980s. And you also see that very structured, it's naturalistic in a way, but it's very perfect in a 1980s way. And it has borders and contrasting colors, and it is pencil signed. It is priced at $35. I think someday this will be priced $100 more potentially when 1980s design really is heralded more and people start looking into who that was. Well, it sure has been fun bringing this to you. I just love this town with all of the antiquing here. It is just one of my favorite places to hang out. 
I am very happy that I am in Tower Avenue Antiques. It's a great store. I encourage you to come visit it and the many other antique and vintage shops in Centralia, Washington, halfway between Seattle and Portland. I think you'll have a good time. I might just see you here. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.